Hey there everybody and welcome to another one of my videos. Finally, uh, I am back and uh, yeah, today I'm taking a look at Nebuchadnezzar. I hope I pronounced that nicely. Uh, I've got a webcam now and I'm going to apologize in advance for the uh, echo that you can hear in this room. This is kind of an empty room that I'm working in right now. And since I haven't done video videos in quite some time, uh, yeah, this is the my new setup. And but anyway, here's the game. Let me let's just uh, listen a bit to that beautiful music. This game is going to come out, if I'm not mistaken, on the 15th of February. So you guys can check out some of these videos uh, and get a bit hyped for the game. This is of course a closed beta version, so the version that I am playing is not going to be the exact uh, version that you guys will be getting. Listen to that music, that's beautiful. I really love it, I really love it. Uh, I'm, I'm really hyped to, to see and play this game. As you guys know, games... Uh, oh, let's, let's turn the music just a bit, just a tad down. So let's put it at... Kind of like two-thirds of what it was. And I guess we can leave the ambient and the audio as it is. So let's save, there we go. Uh, as you guys might know from my uh, channel, I'm really into the city builder games and yeah, here we go. So, Nebuchadnezzar, this campaign will lead you through the whole history of ancient Mesopotamia and all the civilization's milestones. From initial settlement to the fall of Babylon, experience the story of one of the first civilizations, a civilization of imposing cities and grand monuments. That sounds great, that sounds just about what I would be interested in. Oh, and here we are with the map of ancient Mesopotamia um, and history starts pre-pottery, Neolithic, 10,000 to 8,700 BC, that's a long time ago. Uh, and we've got all of these missions here but we're not going to be going in all of them, at least not in this video. I will be making multiple videos. So let's go ahead and start with the pre-pottery Neolithic which is the first mission. We'll have population, we need to do population 300 and then we'll need to store some wheat, bread and have uh, 12 shacks. Should I read the description? Pre-Pottery Neolithic uh, near East culture that inhabited the so-called Fertile Crescent between 10,000 and 8,700. Artifacts from this culture in the Levantine and Mesopotamia. It was pre preceded by the Natufian culture. Okay, never heard of those guys. Typical housing for this culture consists of circular houses sunk into the ground with stone foundations. Walls were made of unbaked bricks and the floors of terrazzo. I don't know what terrazzo is. The fireplace and cooking area were usually outside. This is a lot of information. You guys get to learn some history too with this game. So this is the first time in history that we see the development of organized agriculture. Local cereals such as barley and oat were common crops. Their wild forms at first, but they were gradually replaced by cultivated variants. <clears throat> there were no irrigation systems yet, and so crops were only grown in areas with sufficient moisture. The development of agriculture was also possible thanks to the first granaries, which allowed for longer storage thanks to better ventilation and protection from rodents. Granaries were placed outside at first, but were later gradually moved to special rooms in houses. Muribet. Muribet was an ancient settlement on the west bank of the Euphrates in today's northern Syria. The city was inhabited between roughly 10,000 to 8,000 BC. The first settlement was during the Natufian culture. The archaeological site was flooded by Lake Assad in 1974. Its diameter was about 75 meters. So not a big town or city. Uh, at ease, no. We're going to get normal and hopefully this game comes out with a hard or impossible mode when it does because I'm looking, I'm always up for a challenge. But we are going to be playing normal. Press any key. There we go. Your group of nomads has finally found what they were seeking for so long. An area with sufficient fertile soil and a good climate. No ideal place for a permanent settlement. Oh, an ideal place. And you as the leader of the group, you will have the most important role. You'll organize the construction of your new home. Let's begin. So this is the whole tutorial mission, I would assume. And I'm going to uh, go through it 
this is my second time at the tutorial and the, f the reason for that is because I wanted to know where I can put my face on the screen and the bottom left corner where you see the camera is completely empty at, at least at this point in time so I'll keep it like that anyway hello and welcome I am Gilgamesh first mission for basics okay if you don't need help no let's continue the first thing you'll show is to how to move ball you simply grab any part of the window okay there we go to close any window simply right click that's very handy that's a very good uh, game design uh, idea excellent since we want to continue I've opened the window again I can use WSD the second way is to move the cursor at the edge of the screen also grab using the middle mouse button now you can also zoom in and out with the mouse wheel uh, and this, the current speed is shown up there we can use the E key to uh, to make the, the days go faster if you want to change the game speed for a longer numpad and also clicking that one works space and Q is for pausing apparently uh, user interface other elements but I'll explain those later okay now that we're already finally ready to start let's continue Housing is down here and apparently it's V to open up the menu, which I really like this design. It's very clean and works well enough. So let's go ahead and place down four houses. Can I drag? Yes, there we go. I can drag. People are already coming in. That's fi fine and fast. Your first settler has just arrived in your city. Take good care of them. You'll need them. Okay. Now I need to build a road, which I think is infrastructure X. And they're going to cost two of these things. I don't know what these are. There we go. Excellent. All houses are now accessible and should soon welcome their new set settlers. Since our city is now starting to grow nicely, let's have a look at the mission objective, which is here. You can see that some mission objectives are already complete. The remaining two items are asked you to... Yeah, I need the stockpiles. Let's go. Okay. Build a farm in the highlighted area. So let me close this down. Okay, this is the highlighted area and I'm guessing B is for food, food production and it doesn't say what farm, but I'm guessing a crop farm. Yeah, uh, obviously a farm because that's a bakery. Good, the farm is now ready, but also seems to have a problem. The problem is here is that the farm doesn't have any fields where it could grow crops. To build a field, open the menu, agricultural, Open the menu with agricultural structures. What is this? Oh, okay. And build as you would any other building. The only restriction is that the fields must always be placed near their farm. Build 36 fields. Wait, I don't need to open this. I need to open the building itself. Yeah, there we go. What is this? Farmer farmer transporter oh this is a very nice system so what can i add i can add more farmers and more transporters that's nice operating range 18. okay i would like to know what the operating range and how to change that up works deactivate building no build fields uh wheat field wheat okay so let's build it in this space. Excellent. Okay, but now you might want you might be wondering why exactly 36. If you have a closer look at the farm window, you'll see it currently employs two farmers and an even closer look will reveal two numbers in the bottom left corner of their card. Oh, by the way, I was just going to say this the system with the fields around the farm is similar to how uh, Emperor Rise of the Middle Kingdom used to do farming, and I uh, I agree. Um, not not only do I agree, I would think that usually you should have like you should be able to make like huge fields across the land wherever you'd like, and just you know have the farmers go and work with them. But anyway, let's get back to it. Uh, if you have a closer look at the farm, uh, even closer, maybe two numbers. 18. This represents the current number of fields tended by the given farmer. The second is the maximum number of fields. 
but that does mean uh, you need to build ideal number of fields. There we go, they're moving, they're already working on them. Sometimes there might be not enough space for, for more, while in other cases you might not need the maximum production. Excellent, it is, it is still possible that your farmers are not working yet. This is caused by the fact that each crop can only be cultivated by in a specific part of the year, so it probably started in, in February. Specifically, we can only be sown between January and March, there we go. The current month is displayed in the middle, so before we start production of wheat, we can prepare bread production. But wait, I want to build more of these. I can't? Why cannot? Uh, it's probably part of the... I really like the fact that you can open these windows up and close them whenever you'd like. This is uh, this reminds me of the Settlers game, which did this like decades ago, literally, and it was really, really useful. Before we start working, we need to tell you about transporting goods. Goods are transported by haulers, uh, which is oh my god. Okay, I need to I need to pause the game. My wheat is going to be harvested soon, and I. I which is another type of a slot, just like farmers, these can be hired into, into work buildings. Haulers operate automatically and transport goods between their buildings and other works buildings. Okay, however, in the most important thing to keep in mind is that they have a limited range. This means they won't transport goods to buildings too far from their home building. Okay, so this is a new mechanic which was not present in the Caesar type games. And by Caesar type games, I mean Caesar free. Uh, Pharaoh, Zeus, Emperor. Uh, this range can be displayed using the flag button. Oh, there we go. We, we can see the flags. So they can transport stuff to this range, which is interesting, right? This means that you'll have to have your storage quite close by to these buildings. No transport will happen between two buildings of out of range of the hauler. Okay, build two bakeries in the highlighted area. So let's build, put these up. And this this range probably signifies where they can pull goods from because the, this is usually is a pull and a, a push in the pull system. We won't need any warehouse to produce bread since haulers can bring wheat from a farm directly to the bakery. Okay, so warehouses can be used as intermediate transportation uh, devices. But since we need to store bread and wheat to complete this mission objective, we will also need to build warehouses. Build two warehouses. One, two. So that's why it wasn't allowing me to do it there. By the way, I'm quite curious as to what these are. Basic controls. Okay, on-screen interface, uh, I'm going to probably be checking these out later. I like the fact that, and this is this is a pet peeve that I've had with many games before, especially um, indie games. Uh, a lot of people make these strategy games or city builder games and they just lay out everything on the screen from the get-go. This game is quite clean right you only see the resources that are currently available to this mission which is wheat and bread which is okay you see a couple of things like your money the month i guess this is the name of the city your population and i guess this is unemployment level yeah 25 percent unemployment level so this is quite nice because okay the objectives are also there but i guess i can yeah i can just close them down like that I, let's just leave them the, the heart the map is here as well which is nice because we can modify. Let's let's make it a big bigger. Yeah, let's let's have it be as big as my face or almost as big as my face. And then there's the speed, and I guess this is the menu. Oh, yeah, this is the menu. Okay, return to game. So I don't know what this is. Show height, good selection. Oh, these are the goods. Ah, you can disable and enable goods on your upper panel, which this is great because in some missions I would imagine this is going to get crazy with the amount of goods that your city can have. So this is quite great. I, I, I genuinely love the UI design. I'm not trying to, uh, you know, rub up against the... against. Um, suck up? I'm not. I am not sucking up to the developers. I genuinely love the, the UI de uh, design. So, 
this game is already it's it's started on a high note i just have to say that okay so let's close all of these down because now basic economy yeah there we go we can look at these later these are basically even if cannot be built rotate with r that's okay uh work building and workers there we go i've we've went through this which is nice farming yep we had that explained as well transport of goods okay with the range that's nice production input materials if any okay nice to know that as well and then we've got the warehouse these provide a place to store goods uh, but the tutorial is going to show us anyway right now. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and go in here. So we've got bakers, probably. And we can add either two more bakers or a transporter. I'm going to be adding bakers since we already have unemployment. Uh, and then here, to be sure these, uh, these were will be sufficient for wheat as well as bread, we need to make sure to set everything up just right. Each warehouse can be configured only to accept specific goods. Use the bottom buttons shown below to allow our band of storage of specific goods in a warehouse. These are very nicely done. Uh, this is much faster than having to click, you know. I don't know what this is. A few caravans. Oh, there are caravans in this game as well. Really like it. I really like it. Can't lie. Figuring uh, caravan is loading goods. Ah, okay. So you can set it to load goods, unload goods, or not transport. And then this is haulers and ships, which you either accept or you don't. So let's go ahead and. Ah, okay. Great stuff. Remove column. I can remove a column. Yeah, let's have them with two columns. I guess things are going to... Or maybe... No, let's keep it with one column. Yeah. Uh, really nice UI design. Oh, and you can lock these in place. Wait, what's the locking do? I don't know what's the locking do, but yeah. So let's have this warehouse for bread. Uh, oh, okay. I didn't know that you could do that. Okay, and then this one will be for wheat. Sometimes a warehouse is still storing goods you don't want there. To remove them, you need to do some anything complicated and destroy the wall. Simply use the button shown below, which is this one. That's nice. Destroy all goods. Which will remove all goods of the given type from the warehouse. Well, I would like them to be transported out, not just destroyed. But, you know, that, that's a good option to have. Great, and since everything is set up for the successful completion of the mission, I'll take my leave for now. Once you close this last page of the tutorial, you can continue building without further restrictions. Feel free to experiment a bit. We'll see each other in the next mission. Okay, I guess this is it then. Uh, so I can build more. Ah, sadly I can't right click. I was going to right click on the on the folks. So let's see, we've got bread coming out. Oh, I forgot to add another baker here. It's nice that it tells you how many workers each thing can take. I mean, the amount of workers is a bit exaggerated. To, uh, I've basically got 95 people working up in this in this place. This also sets up how many goods I can store in, which is nice. Production chains. Oh, these are all of them. So this is the help. This is the prestige. Population trade and monuments. This is nice. We'll probably get more into this. And it's nice that it's all working in the background while I'm checking these out, which I love. 
check goods services import mission trade nobody there and then this is the goods okay i've got enough uh i've got enough bread now so let's deactivate both buildings because i want to go to the next uh go to the next mission as well so can i actually rotate these well doesn't actually work like that i'm guessing buildings that can be rotated okay so the houses can be rotated warehouses they can be rotated roads probably can't and this is just the destruction okay so let's get the wheat in the wheat nicely done i like the aesthetic of it as well it's not too brightly colored uh but it is fun enough to watch and not very hard on the eyes hopefully for you guys watching this as well uh okay so what's with the mission oh i need 20. okay so let's let's leave one working then i need 20 bread i forgot about that i guess just let's just keep two of these Hmm. 20 bread. Okay, let's speed things up a bit. This is the max speed. That's interesting. Okay, just one more. There we go. We've de deactivated that, and now let's keep the uh, let's get the wheat in the wheat. There we go, mission complete. Next mission: Prepotry Neolithic B. Mm, okay, population 900, so a lot more. Poor house 16, so we need to update our houses. Uh, is my camera? struggling for a bit hmm okay let me let me just turn off the camera for a moment because it seems to be for some reason Yep, ah, it's still struggling. Okay, so it might be something to do with the uh, with the um, not a perfect system. I guess the rest of the video will have to go without my pretty face on it. It's probably have to. It's probably something that has to do with the um, uh, drivers or something. Okay, so let's read this through this mission as well. Um, Prepotry Neolithic B was the culture of the Near East that followed Prepotry Neolithic A. The people who lived in this period began intensively utilizing livestock, which became the primary livelihood for many. It is dated between approximately 80, 8700 and 6500 BC. It's also the first culture in this area to feature rectangular houses. Hmm, interesting. Even though the houses... Uh, in our other mission were rectangular as well it's also the first culture in this area to feature just just screen with you guys um one important part of the house from this period is the flooring which was made of white clay plaster from limestone it is believed that the use of clay plaster in the walls and floors led to the discovery of pottery the first pre-pottery vessels that started to appear around 7000 bc were made from a mixture of lime and ash layered over baskets mm -hmm. that's that's a nice way of doing it we also you we also see plastered human skulls in this period these played an important role in funerals and demonstrate the great importance of uh, the people of this period assigned to burying their dead at the same time they are considered one of the first forms of art in the area and are almost also among the first historical examples of portraiture 
This culture disappeared during the so-called 8.2 kilo year event. Hmm, a climatic event which lasted approximately 200 years. 6200 6, to 6600 BC and led to a sudden drop in global temperature. Okay, that's that doesn't sound interest, uh, fun. And let okay. Uh, however, the general cultural development of the local inhabitants continued after the period ended. Tell us what. Tell us what was a large ancient settlement located about 50 kilometers from today's Damascus, Syria. The settlement was inhabited between that period and the archaeological site was discovered in 67 and has a diameter of approximately 250 meters. Tell us what offers an important window into pre-pottery Neolithic B and especially into how the organization of work and society progressed in this period. Let's play it on normal. <clears throat> After a long search you finally find a place suitable for your settlement. In addition to fertile soil there are also many grazing animals in the vicinity. In fact, seeing them you begin to wonder whether hunting them is really the best one could do. Let's try something different. Uh, it seems like we are given... Let's pause the game. It seems that we are already given a, a town. And we are already given some shacks. Oh, so goods and services required for the given level. It seems like for the second level we will need bread and probably some milk as well. What is this? Pollution? Is that ability? At the next level we have 62 inhabitants in just one house. Okay. Let's close that down. We've got population of 916 poor houses. Let's look at the map a bit. Very lush, very green on the other side of the river. Oh, it's a nice map. Anyway. Greetings and welcome back. In this mission, I'll show you how to distribute the goods and food you make. First, we need uh, to find out the current needs of our houses. Open house. If you secure all the required goods for a house, the house will be promoted to the next level and will then provide housing for more people. But be warned, the house will continuously consume these goods and if it runs out, its level will drop and you will lose the extra inhabitants and also the labor they provide. All goods are distributed using sellers that work in markets. Build one market. Oh, we've got a new services tab. This is great. This is exactly what I mean by great UI design. Let me check my webcam quickly, see if it's, if it's back to working. Nope, it's still not working. Okay, I, I'm guessing this is going to be it for the webcam today. Anyway, um, services, poor market. Okay. Uh, is that the range of it? Excellent. Now you now I can tell you more about how slots work. A, a work building will never do anything on its own. Instead, they each have several slots which can be occupied by a specific profession. This slot then performs the designated work. To assign a worker to a slot, use the plus button and then select which one. So we've already got two transporters. Uh, we need to add some sellers. Uh, let's make them for bread. Oh. Each slot requires a certain number of workers. The number of workers is displayed. The current unemployment level is displayed up top. We already saw that. Hire one bread seller and one milk seller. Okay. A nicely colored background to let you know what's what. I like that. Good, you can now see that a new warning has appeared above the market. It did, yes. But we can ignore it for now. We'll get to that in a moment. For a market to start distributing goods, it needs to have these goods in its internal storage. The next image shows you where the current internal storage is displayed in the working in the work building. There we go. The activate building. Now you'll get the opportunity to show me what you've learned in the previous build one farm with one wheat with wheat fields, two bakeries and one livestock farm 
uh, with goat pastures to produce milk. Okay, let's build those then. Okay, um, so I'd like to have as much green fields as possible around it. I guess this is the, yeah, this, this is one of the best places for that. Let's place the road. There we go, dirt road. Okay, um, wait. Mm. Nope. Let's cut down the trees. Trees are not interesting, not in this era. them like that we'll leave it we'll leave them like this for now and a livestock farm which is basically the same but a bit smaller I see and I'm guessing the livestock farm also needs uh, yeah let's put it there Let's use the dirt road. Uh, probably like that. And let's remove this. So we've got workers, the same, the same principle there. And what is this? Fields or pastures? So this is a pasture that I'm having to build right now. Okay. So we can add probably two more. Not enough workers. Yeah, let's just add them in. Doesn't matter for now. We'll place down some more housing. Let's place them all down and okay let's not worry about those guys let's put down some more housing over here in the dirt looks like a great place to live right guys let's place down the dirt roads and let's unpause the game uh, we'll probably also need a warehouse. No, we don't have the warehouse? Oh, we do have the warehouse. Uh, that's good enough. And that's my phone. Okay. One second. Okay, back guys, so 
<clears throat> now you'll need to you okay so it seems like they are transporting the uh, yeah they're transporting the uh, stuff in without me having to put it in uh, in here or not uh, do I have employment now unemployment now solved unemployment level 25% okay so I've got more than enough so you'll need to get the opportunity to show me okay so one farm one wheat farm two bakeries one livestock farm one bread and one milk to the market so off you go okay let's uh seems like we're getting a lot of milk oh there we go we've got we've got milk there let's limit this to 12 each Okay, let's make this work faster. Excellent, but uh, how will we know that our production can cover the demand? Open the advisor tab. Here you'll find an estimate of the current production. So we've got production, consumption. That's interesting. I'll probably need to get back into this soon. Annual production and consumption as well as current efficiency. That's that's great. That's great. You know, these are all nice to have things. Some. So I'm not making enough bread apparently. I need more bakers probably. Since even a well working transport system can experience minor fluctuations, I recommend keeping a small reserve in production. Okay. But now let's go back to the warning we saw above the market. Uh, we'll be at the distribution of goods. This warning says that the sellers don't have any route to follow. Sellers, sellers, unlike haulers, don't work automatically. They follow the route set by the player and supply houses along this route. Now, to any of you who have never played the Caesar series, City Builders, there's a walker mechanic. And the walker mechanic, I personally love. It adds to the intricacy of the game and, you know, to having to uh, figure out stuff on your own, right? Now, the issue with the walker mechanic is that it's it's very random in some, some situations and you need to always pay attention to your housing blocks and houses that they don't uh, devolve because of uh, missing a walker or two. So these guys probably have a separate or a different system. To configure the route, activate the tool for new checkpoints and then add them by clicking on the map. A seller's checkpoint can only be placed on a road. So this system is checkpoint based, which is nice. If you want to remove the last checkpoint, use the minus button. If you want to display the current route, use the flag button. This button can also be used to copy the route of another seller if you have the tool for new checkpoints. So continue set routes, set the routes of both sellers so that they cover the whole block of houses. Okay, so this is how they will be working. Can I go like this? Uh, that's interesting. There we go. Oh, I didn't set it. Crap. That's actually interesting. So I can only set it there. Oh, how do I copy? I don't understand how do I copy it. This button can also be used to copy the route, but yeah, but how? That's my question right now.
Oh! There we go. So now my houses are also evolving, which is nice to have. Okay, let me get in more bakers. I think we've established that we need more, more of these guys that bake. There we go. Excellent, you should now see your houses gradually receive bread and milk. Each house that receives new inhabitants. Important note, in most cases you won't be able to satisfy the needs of a whole block of houses during the first round trip of a cellar. In fact, some houses might first lose a the level they previously attained because... Okay, that's completely fine, it's certainly not... Don't forget that you can always speed up time. That's all for this mission. You did great. The mission will be complete as soon as all... Yeah, it's, it is complete. There we go. Nice one. Next mission. Okay, so let's get into a more interesting one. Ubaid period. So I need 1450 housing and uh, population and standard houses. The Ubaid period was a prehistoric culture in ancient Mesopotamia, which lasted between 65 and 3800 BC in southern Mesopotamia. So apparently over here. Oh, and I guess we will be having more towns this time around, so probably trade. The culture was known for its large settlements without walls and rectangular houses of clay bricks with multiple rooms. The first template, temples, which were the first public buildings, also began to appear. Irrigation start, started playing a very important role in the agriculture. Irrigation was based on canals organized in a grid-like fashion designed to provide moisture to crops as they grew. This was also when people began using the plow. The plow. This invention led to an abundance of food and people could begin, begin specializing. We thus see the rise of, of the first specialized jobs such as potters and tailors. However, the majority of the population still worked in agriculture. This led to the first Stratification of society and the emergence of the first ruling classes. In this period, these were mainly families connected to the chieftain of the settlement. Power also became hereditary, laying the foundations for the city-states of the future. Eridu. Eridu was the southernmost Sumerian city. It was founded in 5400 BC and, it, and is considered one of the oldest cities in the world. According to the Sumerian king list, Eridu was the first city in the world. It had a special, a special place in Sumerian mythology as the home of the god Enki. Eridu was abandoned in around 600 BC, so that was almost 5,000 years of history. Interesting. We don't probably have a city that's 5,000 5, years old in our current world, probably. I don't think that we do. There might be some. Probably due to the significant rise of the saline water table and the certification caused by intense irrigation. So there you go, irrigation doesn't always have good sides. You need to be able to protect the land as well. We'll play it on normal, obviously. Let me get some water in, my throat is starting to itch. I haven't talked this much in uh, weeks, but I'm glad to be back making these videos. Especially for this game, the soundtrack is great. Uh, the UI is phenomenal, like honestly. Indie game designers, look at these guys and take notes. They really know what's up, they really know how to make a good UI. And the gameplay, we'll just have to wait and see. Time to dig. Your people have been growing crops on the fertile soil near the river since time immemorial. However, your, as population grows, this form of agriculture is becoming insufficient. It might be time to try a different approach to irrigation. A different approach to irrigation? Or irrigation, the different approach. I'm guessing it, they wanted to mean to say the irrigation is the different approach. <clears throat> okay. So yeah, let's continue. Build one livestock farm in this highlighted area. Uh, farm is RB, livestock farm. Build, also build one crop farm. Those are two, uh, I don't like it when they do that. Build irrigation canals. Oh, we've got wells now, nice. 
Clay mine, ceramic workshop, that's great. Oh, and we can build stone roads as well, as well as irrigation pumps. Build, build irrigation canals in the highlighted area to continue. What, everywhere? Okay. But we don't, they don't contain any water. They'll need an irrigation pump. As you can see, the water is now flowing in the canals, but there isn't enough for the whole system. Oh, this is an interesting mechanic. I really like this one because in in Faro you could also use irrigations, but it just worked, didn't matter. So now you need to build two more pumps alongside and then connect them, obviously. Uh, irrigation canal. There you go. Build one warehouse in the highlighted area. Uh, I wouldn't be making it there, but okay, I guess. Build road. Great, everything is almost ready. Fields and pastures. This warehouse will be used as a storage point for products from farms while the other buildings will take the products they need from the warehouse. To ensure smooth transport we need to guarantee that warehouse will have enough space for wheat as well as for milk to do so you redactivate all goods for the warehouse except for wheat and milk. You learned how to do this. Okay. Uh, okay, let's keep wheat and milk and let's put them half and half there we go set the maximum warehouse capacity for wheat to 28 and milk to eight. okay why why like that milk is produced at the same rate throughout the year while wheat is only harvested during a few months this may need handled ah, okay 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 and the last thing I'd like to show you in this mission is the info layer. The info layer is a very important tool that can provide crucial aid when searching for problems in your city. You can activate it by using the goods buttons in the upper panel. Okay. Number of goods. Uh, oh, here we are. Consumed. Inhabitants. Sellers. Not used. Okay, okay. That's interesting to know. Good, it might be not be showing you too much information right now because the project is not yet developed, but this function will be very useful in the future. The details description is available in the advisor help panel. There you'll also find several practical usage examples. Let's build the city then. Oh, let me pause. Like nothing's happening. What am I doing? Uh, irrigation. Here we are. That's all good to know. Let's see how these... See, I would have loved if these actually... Because I love the mechanic of, you know, needing more pumps to pump in more water. I love that idea. I really think it's it's great uh, that they've implemented it. Um, but, <laughs> there's a but always. My, uh, my question is... Why do they not take workers? They should have been taking workers, in my opinion. But anyway, let's zoom out and build this map out. I like the mountains uh, or the hillsides. I really like the uh, the map, how it's laid out. So I think I'm going to be making a big old housing block over here. Kind of like that. Let's put in the dirt roads, probably. Wait, let's put in the housing first and foremost. Kind of like that probably is sufficient. Hmm. 
Okay, let's put in the roads. Uh, guessing we need to have those work in there. Let's put some uh, bakeries in. Well, I'm guessing that could work. Oh, the the trees get automatically removed when you build on them. I didn't know that. That's that's good to know. Okay, and we'll need we need a poor market. And the well, which doesn't work here because it needs, I'm guessing it needs water. So I'll probably need to get that irrigation out of there. That canal, probably, maybe. Do I have any other space? No, I don't. Okay. Uh, this could also have been a nice housing block, but yeah, let's, let's go ahead and uh, unpause the game and hurry things up. Oh, forgot to put in the cellars for bread and what is this oh that's pottery I guess I can have the cellar for no not, not, not yet not, not yet okay There we go, that should be working fine. Let's speed things up a bit. So this should be working just fine right now. Let's go ahead and see how I'm going to be able to make a Can I get in? No, nowhere else, because I'm probably going to need a well, most definitely, most def. Hmm. Hmm. So I can't go out that way, I probably can't go out that way either. Uh, can I not move? Oh, only in here. Okay, so there, <laughs> the game makers uh, basically tricked me into having my population be set up over here. But you know what? I'm going to... Wait, so what does the well actually do? Ah, one second though. So I can place on this... Ah, okay, okay, okay. So it might just be... Uh, that the well works uh, here as well. So this is a carrier. But does the well work? That's my question, if it does work. So for the third level, they also need pottery. Wait, uh, let me check out appeal. Mm, somehow that's very appealing. Pollution, oh, we've got pollution as well? Is that like no noise pollution or something along those lines? So we, we've already got some houses uh, rising up, well, rather not rising up, but working. Um, okay, so we can't actually trade with anybody or have diplomacy. We are losing pottery. We need pottery. Wheat is dead even. Bread is on the plus, milk is on the plus, but pottery we are losing. 
Oh, also, water production and consumption is uh, 100%, which I don't know exactly how, how it works, but you know, it is. It is what it is. Okay, let's go into making pottery then. Clay mine. Where can I place the clay mine? Is it anywhere? It, no, it needs to be on this, on this nice land. Um, yeah, let's place it. Hmm. Can't really make roads here, can I? now? no, I can't. Can I actually delete? No, no I can't do that either. Whatever, let's just um yeah, let's just place it here. That's a clay mine and then we'll need two ceramic shops. Seems like we don't have enough workers. What can I place? Another producer or a transporter. Probably need another trans. Oh no, I need another distributor for the pottery. People are leaving the city. You could not provide your people with the living conditions they were they are used to and expect. What? Uh, what? What's this do? Current maximum number of workers. People are coming back. You're still once again flourishing. Okay. Let's check out the ceramic shop. So we're making, okay, so we're not making enough clay, but we are making enough ceramics, apparently. Uh, I'll probably also need another warehouse. So I'll place that one here and I'll say, don't accept anything other than ceramics and clay. There we go. And let's see what happens then. I probably also need more houses, so let's just put down more houses. Uh, I guess here and then here. Oh, and there we go. We've got one standard house, which is 94 each. And apparently this is the maximum population level. I'm guessing this is the maximum population level uh, for now, maybe? We'll see, hopefully. It would be so satisfying if I could talk to these people, like ask them, why did you come here? What's your dream and aspiration? But yeah, just joking. Uh, let's watch these. So we are still at a deficit with the clay. I'll probably need to make more clay. Let's, let's add another clay worker. Let's see now. Still on a deficit. Bread is on a deficit. Milk is on a deficit as well. So we'll probably need more. Yeah, but that won't help much. And then the same here, most likely. Yeah, that's not going to help too much. Pottery looks like I've got enough of, so let's just go ahead and uh, speed up the game. And I'm guessing the next mission that I'll be doing is going to be basically trade. And once that is done, uh, I'm going to be getting into the big missions of, you know, making a lot of stuff. Why is this guy not working? They don't have any clay, that's why.
Can I do this? I'm curious. Yeah, it gets taken out automatically anyway, because these guys can, they have their own movers and they can do both push and pull of, of resources, which is nice. That's, that's acceptable, obviously. Oh my god, the unemployment. Let's put down some dirt, some stone roads. What do you guys say? Do they move faster? Do people move faster on them? Or like, what's the, what's the deal with them? So I still need seven houses to evolve. Problem is I'm not making a lot. I'll probably need another farm. Hmm. Okay, let's let's reshuffle things around. Yeah. Let's reshuffle things a bit around. So I'll leave the uh Okay, let's pause everything down. I'll need to destroy both of these. And I'll destroy this as well. I don't know exactly how it works. Um, I'll need to figure out how that works. Right, so let's put down one farm here. This is going to be the crop farm because I want it to be near. Oh, it's not near enough, but yeah, it's okay. So let's, yeah, let's put it there. I'll need to make a road to it anyway. Okay, so that's outside. And now I'll need to irrigate it as well. How much is that range? That's free range, right? So what I do need to do, because this is free, uh, I need to go like this. Kind of like that, and I guess this is going to be perfect land, I think, I hope. Let's put down some fields, hopefully I didn't waste my time doing this. So that's 44 fields, which means I'll, I'm going to be getting a lot more, and a lot more fertile land. Hopefully the logic works. Yeah, there we go. And then let's put down the other farm, which is the livestock farm, and that's going to be... Yeah, I'll put it down here. This really makes you think about how you're going to be solving these, these issues. Okay, so only three irrigation pumps for me. This is actually a hard map. <laughs> I mean it's not incredibly hard but it's not very easy either. So if I place an irrigation pump... No, that's not going to work. Okay.
Okay, so that's basically going to be it. Oh man, this this doesn't look good actually. This warehouse is a bit in the way as well. Hopefully this is going to be making me a bit more. I don't know if the milk is going to work. No, it's they're both going to be insufficient. But I can at least get a new baker. And that should be, yeah, the bread is going to be okay. But the milk isn't, sadly enough. So this is an interesting mechanic, I'm not going to lie. Let's speed up the game, see if we can finish the map like this. By the way, I'm doing this by holding the E button down. Ah, okay, people are devolving. Okay, a lot of people are devolving. So what, what are they missing? Milk. Yeah, that's milk. Oh, they've got pollution nearby. Oh, and the game crashed. What was I doing? Uh, I think I was just checking out. Let's get back into it. By the way, did the webcam get fixed? No, it's still, it's still broken as hell. So I was checking out the houses, just uh, FYI to the developers. I was checking out the houses uh, and I think I clicked or right click on, on, on the menu. I think I clicked on the, on the house menu. Hopefully the um, save game is still there because uh, the auto save, I mean, is still there. Okay, let's load the game. Uh, oh man, that was like a long time Ago, but I'll just I know what I did I'll just uh, do that again yeah it's the same that was before uh, what I did was I got more workers in here okay let's look at this we are still on the plus So we need 16 houses and we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, exactly these. So I'm not going to actually be promoting any others because they will just be taking up my, um, my um, food. So I'm just going to be keeping these and letting only, only these 16 ones evolve. I'm not going to be making new, new ones because I can't produce enough. Uh, I could add a new guy here just for one field I guess you know like race production minimally okay so let's speed things up uh, I'm at 8% unemployment level and it's only going to get worse now. Oh wait, uh, yeah, yeah, I need a warehouse, forgot about that. Got to enable them sorry do they have workers they don't have workers so the warehouses themselves won't be able to actually <clears throat> lorry goods in and out uh, of themselves by themselves uh, which is something different than uh, the other games in the genre we'll, we'll just have to see if this if this is how the final game will work but yeah this mission should be done 
it's a it's a very restricting map uh, you're only allowed those three ones oh and we've got fish nice what does this re what warehouse oh it's a quick oh I see I see okay it's a quick button to go there there we go so it's the scenario is made so that you can get 16 houses if you don't upgrade it to the standard level which is the third level if uh, if you don't um, make more more than 16 which I guess makes sense in a way there we go mission is complete um, this is going to be it for today though, uh, this video has gone on long enough, most of it was tutorial stuff but I hope you guys have enjoyed it, I don't know what was wrong with my camera, uh, anyway the lighting wouldn't have been good in, uh, by this time uh, because the natural light has gone. Uh, I would like to thank everybody for watching and listening, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this as much as I did. If you did, uh, leave a like or a comment, if you didn't then leave a dislike, doesn't really matter. I will be making more of these videos and playing through all of these missions in a timely manner in the upcoming days, so stay tuned for that. Thank you again to Nepos Games and uh, the wonderful devs for allowing me to play their game in the closed beta state. And thank you to everybody again for watching and listening. I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.